second Siembra Holograph uh, Young Frontiers meeting. And this is the second day. And I would like to introduce Raul, Raul Arias from the Instituto de Física of La Plata. Uh, he's going to talk about uh, rainy entropies in quantum field theory and gravity. Raul. Okay, thank you, Martin. Thanks all the organizers for inviting me, inviting me to talk. Um, as, the, as, as Martin said, I'm going to talk about range entropies in quantum field theory and gravity. Um, and I will start to, this is, will be a, a basic, two basic talks, let's say, more or less basic. Um, so I, I didn't grow an outline. So if you want to know what is going to happen in the lecture, you have to stay there. Nothing of outlines. And I will start saying where we are today or tomorrow. Uh, let me know, Martin, when 10 minutes remains, because <laughs> probably I will be bad with the time. No, no problem, no problem. Thank you. Um, we are going to be in this intersection between quantum information that is here in green, gravity, in yellow, and quantum field theories. That is, the, that is a, a, an interesting place to me, is the place where I'm working now, the last years. Uh, and why? Because in particular, it is interesting what quantum information quantities and quantum information theories uh, have to say in gravity or Q QFT. I'm going to give you a few examples. For example, um, quantum information plus quantum field theory. In this, in this thing, we, we have an entropic C theorem. C theorem that is uh, in conformal field theory, you have a conformal field theory in the ultraviolet, for example, and a conformal field theory in the infrared, and you want a function that flows between them. Uh, in two dimensions, this is called C theorem, and in more dimensions, this is called F theorem. In particular, the C theorem was known, but there was an entropic C theorem due to Cassini and Huerta, another C function that is just uh, involved in entanglement entropy. But what is interesting is that in two plus one dimensions, there is something called the F, F theorem. And the only candidate to a C function, F function in two plus one, is just an entropic uh, function. It's, it came from entanglement entropy and quantum information considerations. Um, moreover, also in this way of Hershey flows, uh, this, this also was a paper of Cassini and Huerta. And also you have for the defect conformal field theories, another equivalent that is called uh, G-theorem. And this G-theorem also is uh, obtained via entropic considerations. Also here you can see, not using entanglement entropy, but another, another uh, quantum information quantities, you can detect phase transitions. And in particular, you can detect um, topological phase transitions that are hard to obtain in another way because uh, in a topological phase transition, you don't have a symmetry broken guide to. to Sorry, Raúl. Sí, Leo. Uh, just uh, can, can you can you mention or can you just indicate what is the the reference for defect? Uh, for the defect flows. Sí. Yeah, please. Thanks. The, the one I know, at least. <laughs> is uh, already Horacio, Nacho Salazar, that you, very, that you know very well, and Torroa. Thank you. Uh, they studied, studied the G theorem. Of course, the G theorem is in for a def defect CFT, in, I guess, two dimension, one plus one dimension. Um, and also, we have uh, a lot of uh, interest because we all love gravity, applying quantum information to, to gravity and quantum field theory. 
In particular, the holographic entanglement entropy, I will call it holographic entanglement entropy, HEE, is a new ingredient, or well, it's not new from 2006, but it's another ingredient. In ADS GFT dictionary, this is interesting by its own. And just to mention some things, also we have um, there is a bulk reconstruction. To study bulk reconstruction, uh, you need things like the modular Hamiltonian. You need things like the entanglement wedge. So all these quantum information things, and also in the last times we people got the page cube, let's say, uh, or something like that, using entropy consideration also. So there is a lot of interplay between quantum information, quantum gravity, and quantum field theory. I just motivated with examples. Today we are going to be mostly here, lecture one. And tomorrow we are going to be here in the intersection, but more, more in the gravity side, let's say here. So in this slide, I, I will go fast. In this slide, I just list an, an incomplete a set of quantum information objects that I know was used in quantum field theory and also in gravity. The very well known is entanglement entropy that measures the entanglement between two subsystems, for example. And you know the entanglement entropy is defined by the trace of rho log rho. Rho is the density matrix of some state. But this holds when, and okay, you can do, you can, if you have a subsystem, this is a reduced density matrix that I will define later. This holds when the, the total density matrix, this is the definition of a reduced density matrix. This is the total density matrix. And this is meaningful if the total density matrix is pure. If it is not pure, you don't have a measure of entanglement. And because of that, exists the negativity of entanglement. The negativity of entanglement is going to measure entanglement and correlation when you have a mixed state. Also, people study mutual information. Why? Because the entanglement entropy is an ultraviolet divergent quantity, and the mutual information resolves this ultraviolet uh, issue. Also, if Pablo is there, that is, can correct me. Also, the reflected entropy that is uh, in study last year by them and Horas, by Pablo and Horacio, is a final version of this von Neumann entropy in quantum field theory. Uh, is the only thing I, I know. Then you have another thing, you have the modular Hamiltonian, for example, is another quantum information object, object is just, if you want the logarithm of the density matrix. This is very useful in, this was very applied to, to uh, gravity computations and holographic stuff. It's involved in this, in this history of bulk reconstruction. And also it has its roots in something called al algebraic quantum field theory that I, I, I'm not uh, an expert, but it's like a, the formalization of a quantum field theory in such a way that you don't have ultraviolet divergences or infinities. You don't have infinities in the, in the theory. Uh, and lastly, I want to mention this capacity of entanglement. Capacity of entanglement is much less known. I will say something about that because I'm working on that. But it's just to mention this, this also can detect change in topology of a system. And these two guys, relative entropy and trace distance, these two guys uh, measure distance between quantum states. And they have also the trace distance, I think, was not studied yet in, in, 
in gravity, but the relative entropy it is. That is a lot of papers about that. And today we are going to center in range entropies. Um, because range entropies are interesting, and I want to introduce the replica trick that is a trick to compute trace, the trace of row to the end that is involved in this range entropy. And then, as I say, all of them measure different physical quantities, or some of them measure entanglement, for example, but for different density matrices, if you have mixed states or pure state, some are related, and this is, this is a crazy picture of relation between quantum information quantity. Um, Crazy. A, these are a lot of things and are not all the things that you have in quantum information, but for example, the, the mutual information can be uh, put in terms of the, the entanglement entropy. And you can see why this is UE finite because you are summing and uh, rest, you are taking the difference with between entanglement entropy, then you have an ultraviolet finite thing. The relative entropy can be written in terms of the uh, modular Hamiltonian, expectation values of the modular Hamiltonian between two states and changing entanglement entropy. The capacity of entanglement is like the second derivative of the range entropy. And it is also uh, can be written in terms of uh, fluctuations, quantum fluctuations of the uh, modular Hamiltonian. Um, and in fact, this was used in last times by um, in many papers by Katrin Zurek. Zurek, Berlinde, and more people, because they say that in gravity, uh, you can study these quantum fluctuations, and they have some um, feeling that this can be something uh, that you can measure in an experiment. I don't know more than that, but I know that this is the, the, the thing of the papers. The, paper, the first paper, I think, was by these two last year, I guess. And another interesting thing, many of these quantities can be computed using holography. We all know that this, the entanglement entropy is the, minima, uh, is the area of a surface, minima, uh, minimal area of a surface. Um, the entanglement negativity also can be, this is by Ryu Takashanagi. I will talk about this tomorrow. This goes like the area also. They are all dual to geometric uh, things. This is the area of something called entanglement wedge. This is another, a more recent paper by Ryu. And tomorrow we are going to see that the range entropies or, or a causing of the range entropies uh, has also an holographic dual. In this talk, all of them, all the quantum information quantities that I will mention will depend on a region of the space time and the quantum state. And the quantum state in this talk will be always the vacuum state. So uh, this is not a necessity. You can define all of these quantities for systems. Uh, I mean, you can define a set of particles and say these two particles are the region A and the rest region B but will not be a region in space-time, let's say. Uh, but we are going to take regions in space-time. This is what, what is going to be the range entropy in quantum field theory, the lecture one. So why these range entropies? Well, in this paper, one motivation that, that they are interesting is in this paper, it was measured trace to row square. But this is not the range entropy, but the range entropy that I didn't define yet, I will do it in the next transparency transpar uh, slide. 
uh, try to row to the end, and these people measure try to row square. That is called purity. It's called purity because if, if you have a normalized density matrix, uh, and the state is, is pure, you have to obtain trace to the row to the square equal to one. Well, these people, as far as I understand, measure this trace to the row square. I don't know if they are available to measure another ends. Um, well, it's a quantity from which you can obtain another quantity, like the capacity of entanglement and the entanglement entropy. I will say this uh, in some slides. It has an holographic dual. This is interesting. Also, this will introduce introduce us in the study of the replica trick. And this will be important tomorrow to, to understand how this, this, how this manifests in, in, in a gravity computation. And also, if we have time to talk about replica wormholes, this is just a trick to compute trace to the road to the end. And another thing that you can read deeply in this paper is that you can have, it's not just that have has more information of the spectrum of the reduced density matrix than the entanglement entropy, it knows the whole spectrum. You know the range entropies, you know the whole spectrum of the density matrix. So let's start. This is very big, no? Here is Renji smiling, smiling to us. Very good. So we are going to think that we have a region in space time. We are going to divide the region in, in two subregions. One is called V, the another B complement. The reduced density matrix is defined in this way. You have to take the partial trace on the, this is the full density matrix, full. If the density matrix on B union B complement, you have to trace a, a piece of this and you have the reduced density matrix. Uh, we are going to think always that the Hilbert space, the total Hilbert space can be factorized in this way. This is not true. Typically in quantum field theory, this is not true. Uh, uh, well, but we are going to assume that we can. This is the definition of the Renzi entropies that was proposed by Renzi um, many years ago. And this is the range of n between zero and one and one and infinity. Some special limits. When you go to one, you have the entanglement entropy. This is the entanglement entropy. There are more special limits when n goes to zero. This is called uh, in quantum information Hartley entropy. or mean entropy, yes. Uh, well, that's max entropy or max entropy. And this is called mean entropy, the opposite limit when n goes to infinity. And this uh, has some useful uh, properties in quantum information theories. Also, I saw, I don't know, last year or, or in 2018, these two entropies also were computed in a paper of holography by Pennington and some other people. It's a long paper, you can check it there. Uh, but also they have some interest, since they have so, some interest in, in gravity. Here I list some properties, uh, some properties known a bit more about range entropies. They are always positive. They are basis independent. You can compute this in any basis you want and you will, will have the same results. Um, the range entropy, for, uh, the range entropy computed from for the reducing density matrix on B is the same as the one computed by the reducing, reducing density matrix on the complement, they have this property. Um, well, they are involved in this, this quantity that I already defined, the purity. 
There are invariant and their changes, unitary changes. This is an unitary that you can apply on the reduced density matrix. This is trivial from the definition. The definition has Sorry, one a, question. Sí, sí. Uh, so this equation that the, the, the Renny entropy on, on the on the region and its complement is, is true. It's only for the when when you're talking about the ground state, or this is for any any state, any density matrix that you construct? No, I, I think that uh, the state has to be the ground state and has to be pure the state. Uh, okay. What I say is like the entanglement entropy, that if the state is pure, the entanglement entropy of the region or the complement is the same, this is the same. Okay, thanks. Just, just I want to make sure. Uh, there is a question by Eloy. Eloy. Thanks. Uh, Raul, in the previous slides, what is the meaning of, of you said n belong to the interval 0, 1, and the union with the interval 1 to infinity? Is not the same to say that uh, it belongs to the interval 0 to infinity, or there is other Well, meaning? Well, you see that uh, here you have 1 minus n in the uh, okay. denominator. So 1 is excluded. If you go to one, is the entanglement entropy. It's not, the, I mean, the range entropy from for n equal one is the entanglement entropy, but you have to take a limit. You cannot evaluate n equal one as you wish. Okay. This is because the definition. Uh, this is because this thing that you say. You can set n equal 1.5 and not one. You, ha you have to do something and take a limit. Okay, thanks. No, no, for sure. Um, and lastly, I list a couple more. This is called additivity. And this is called uh, concavity. And note that concavity holds just in this, uh, in this range. Also, th these are the, up to this. The, up to this condition of concavity that holds just when you are in, in, in this range of n, the rest of the properties are general for general n, but you also have for different values of n another difference, uh, another different property that you can have, for example, for n equal one, this also have, is for n equal one. For n equal one, you have this concavity condition, and with this concavity condition on something called strong subadditivity, using entanglement entropy, the, the limit of n equal one of the range entropy, you, you can show this e theorem that I was uh, mentioning in the, in the introduction. This is just a comment. A lot of properties are written here in this Wikipedia or Scholarpedia page. A lot of properties, and this is a, a, good, this is a, a good place if you have to deal with some property of quantum information things. Um, and also these inequalities are satisfied by the range entropy. And these inequalities can be shown from the, from the definition of the range entropy. Now, and, and now we are going to see the, another way of, to write this, these inequalities. In this, in this uh, paper was proposed an analogy with the statistical mechanics that can be really very, it's very well written also in this paper. Um, so we can think that you have a, this partition function. It's a thermal partition function. It's like this. If you identify beta with n, beta will be one of the temperature and uh, h with the modular Hamiltonian. You identify this, you can think that this is a thermal partition function, and then you can write like thermodynamic relations, like this is called free energy, is the free energy. This is the free energy. This is the total energy. Um, but maybe you can, you can think what quantity it corresponds with the thermal entropy in this analogy. And the quantity that corresponds with the thermal entropy is this one. That is not the range entropy. This, the range entropy is inside this derivative, but it satisfies the relation for the, 
for the um, entropy. Uh, and this quantity is called in many ways, refined range entropy, also improved range entropy, also modular entropy or modular range entropy, I don't know. But this will be important for us because tomorrow we are going to see that this is the one that has an holographic dual. It's not the range, it's this one, but you can compute the range from still there by integration. Um, and also we have uh, an analogy with the heat capacity. This is the definition of the heat capacity in thermodynamics using all this uh, stuff that I grow here and, and also this still there. You can, you can see that you can write this. And this is uh, what I call capacity of entanglement in the, in the beginning. That has not attracted too much attention, but was introduced for the first time here to, in a CONMAT paper to, to detect a topological phase transition. Then was a bit studied three years ago in quantum field theory and with some comments in holography. And this year was uh, applied to, to, to detect phase transitions, uh, topological changes, changes in the replica wormholes that maybe you will, we will uh, mention tomorrow. And also in random systems, uh, also myself and a collaborator, we are quenching this capacity of entanglement in quantum field theory. So this is like, this is a quantity that is attracted, attracting some attention in, this, uh, in these days. Uh, and is related to expectation values of the modular Hamiltonian also. And you can see that this, this inequality that I wrote for the, for the range entropy, the transact, you can write it in this uh, thermodynamic language at the end, and it's just positivity of entropy, capacity of entropy, no energy, capacity of entanglement, and, and this is still then. So a couple of exercises. To, to you or the students or, or to this is uh, the easiest one is just take this density matrix and compute and then I, this is the result is this it's very easy but maybe well it, I mean I don't know the background of the people maybe you can have problems in any case, you can ask me. This is a bit more involved, yeah? but it's also an exercise just that I'm going to say some things. This is a harmonic oscillator. You will have harmonic oscillators on a chain. You, you are in one dimension. What you want is a subsystem. For example, you have these lattice sites and these lattice sites. This is, okay, equally sp spatial does not matter in my picture. This is the size of the lattice that is here in the, in the sum. And this is the size of the subsystem A, the complement is B. Uh, and what you want to compute is in the range entropy again. You have that the Hamiltonian, this is the Hamiltonian, can be written in this way, where this is the oscillator, let's say. This is a real and symmetric matrix. And this is the moment, conjugate momentum. Momentum. So, well, it satisfies this commutation relation, that, that for sure. Then to guide the exercise, uh, it very well written in uh, or a little. Okay, it's not in full detail, but it's in some detail. In some reference I put in the web page by Nishioka, I guess. Uh, there are two assumptions. One assumption that you have to do is that there exists a linear relation between this creation and annihilation operator that you want to introduce and uh, phi and pi. Here, 
I'm using the notation that Nishioka used. These are in this index with capital I is uh, on focus space. And this index is uh, on the lattice, let's say, on the original Hamiltonian. Alpha and beta are matrices. Uh, that are not independent. I guess they satisfy this relation. And another assumption that was done, mostly in these two, thing, two papers, is that you can write the modular Hamiltonian in this way. And with this modular Hamiltonian, uh, you can generate this reduced density matrix. Um, Well, that's all. That, that, these are the assumptions. But if they, I have some doubts if, if this is assumptions or not, of this is true. So if someone wants to add something, that, that's fine. And then the computation, the, the rest of the computation remains in that you, have, you can compare two point functions. Uh, in one side, you have the two point functions of the oscillators and the momentum they will have a form, they are, will, will have form of a matrix, of course. This is called X, this is called P, this is delta IJ. But in other hand, you can compute the, the expectation values using the density matrix. I mean, you can compute the expectation values using the Hamiltonian, I don't know, you can compute the function, I don't know, doing things and other things. For example, for a massive scalar, you will have a Bessel function. Um, or you can compute the user, Uh, the expectation value, uh, the expectation values using this uh, trace of the quantity you want with the density reduced density matrix. So by comparing the two results, the two result has to be the same, of course. You can write this expression that this, uh, like the important expression. I forgot to mention this epsilon y is the what is called entanglement spectrum is very useful to detect topological phase transition, the gap of the entanglement spectrum, you can use it to detect phase transitions, at least topological. Um, it's very used in, in condensed matter. And this eigenvalue here, this is another eigenvalue, is the eigenvalue of another matrix that multiplies the correlators is the square root of the multiplication of these two correlators. And so, so doing so, you have this relation and computing trace right to the end. You can see that you can write the range entropies in this way that is telling you that with the, that the range entropy and also the entanglement entropy, if you take the limit and go into one, is a function of the correlator and functions of the two point functions of the fields. And this is, uh, will be general for, for any Gaussian theory. If you have a quantum field theory that is Gaussian and, and satisfies the big theorem, then you can, you, you, all, you always know that the entanglement entropy or the range entropy will be function of the correlation and function of this, this the eigenvalues of this matrix. So typically what you do is to compute in the lattice this X times P, you take the values and apply the formulas and you can get the entanglement entropy. Uh, but this way that I'm saying to do, sí, can, can I ask a question, Raúl? Sí. Uh, you say it's a function of the correlator, but the correlator is usually a function of two points in time, while I would expect that the range entropy is a function of a single point in time. We are always at fixed time. Yes, but the correlator necessarily have a, have a time lapse, right? No, yes, okay, okay, okay. Um, I mean, I don't know in which sense. If you have the two point, the, the correlator of two scalar fields, at fixed time is a Bessel function, if they are massive, for example. There is no time there. Okay. 
but we okay. can maybe I, I I will check. this is this is a quantum mechanical system so the correlator can only de there is no space dependence and it can only depend on the time of one of the fields and the time of the other field you are putting well, both times at the same at the same point this is this is my question yes the time is always uh, fixed and they are on the same cauchy slice if you want okay okay um see yeah i have okay. a question max see but again i mean if if you want to kick me out to discussion I'm, i take it as well but um so it's to the previous slide so what what do i learn from this exercise so you're showing me a system that maybe you wrote in in weird basis i could probably do a transformation on k and make it all the couple oscillators and, and more or less be done so what 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 i'm learning from from this you know because there's no interaction right it's so i could diagonalize it right with uh, with some so you're talking about something that happens in some basis versus something that happens in some other basis and you give me some maybe not now or or or, or now if you're ready but what is the key? What what do I learn by doing this this uh, Gaussian system in funny coordinates? Mm, in funny <laughs> coordinates. Uh, well, this is a general uh, way to write this Hamiltonian. Uh, in fact, if you can do it also for scalar fields, and or the, the way we, the the form will be this free scalar fields, for example. And not just harmonic oscillators on the on the lattice, uh, but I think that the the important thing is that is the one I mentioned about this that you can write all the 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 only information that you need is the diagonalization if you want of, of uh, your correlation matrices. Right. So yeah, maybe I but but. You know, the equation that you're showing phi as a function of creation and annihilation is a de facto diagonalization. And when it is diagonalized, then, you know, all computations are, well, I just, I, yes. just, I, I see that the physics isn't going from one base to another, but I don't see, because it should, it should, it should be like base independent also. So I'm, I'm, I get a little confused, but okay, maybe, maybe I have to think about it. Well, no, yes, maybe we can talk later, uh, but... Yes, I'm with you. I mean, the, the thing that I learned from here was, was just that. I agree with you that maybe in another basis is uh, more easy that you, you say, okay, why are you going to do this? But in some sense, I feel that this is more general, but yes, I cannot uh, say much more. Um, Pablo, pero can I insist, maybe it's the same thing, it's the same thing as that Leo said. You can go to normal coordinates and put this as all separate and independent oscillators, right? See, si, you can. I... And, and so all these correlators, phi i, phi j, they, they, they are all zero unless i is j, same with pi i, pi j, etc. Right? Isn't that the case? Si. So maybe repeating Leo's question and, and we kick it to the discussion so not to interrupt more. Um, yeah, what, what what are we learning here? But maybe let's kick it to the discussion. Or Cesar, Cesar, si, si. question. Or, or, si. Hi, yes, or, sorry. Si. No, I just I just wanted to add something regarding to this discussion. I believe the important part is that uh, is that in this basis, the basis that you're using is the basis of the lattice, no? And that's where you define your regions, si. your spatial regions. Si. So you want to have this basis because in that way you can trace over a certain region. And when you go to the Fox space, you lose the information about the spatial regions. And you are computing the entropy on some um, on, on the system reduced to a, to a special region. I think that's the that's why you want to work with this basis. At least that's how I see it. I don't know if that's correct. I see. So so what Cesar is saying is that in this way I can say one region goes from here to here, the other from here to there, and if I go to normal coordinates, I lose that. You, you lose that information. Yes. See, you see, can say see. like from i from one to k. <clears throat> Is the is that region and very, very you good. have this? Yeah. Thank you. See, see, see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. 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 Thanks. Uh, yes. Raúl, there is a question by Danilo Díaz. Uh, you you can see it in the chat. Think in the ah. vacuum state. He says. Let me open the chat. See, all of this in the vacuum state. 
when the state is not a vacuum, uh, you lose. Sí. Sí, sí, all my talks will be always on the vacuum state. Uh, the other computations, uh, yeah, as you say. Sí, well, you can define a vacuum if you want. Uh, sí, sí, you can define a vacuum there. I mean, they are not interacting between themselves, but uh, if, I mean, you can you can do it. And I think I will do something like that in the, I don't know if today or tomorrow. Um, I have how many time? Because we have to see replicatrix. If not, we are uh, going to have problems. You have tw tw almost uh, 20 minutes. Ah, okay, okay. Very good. Um, but what I say here, in fact, you are the, in some sense, you are diagonalizing the correlation matrix. Uh, and this has, if you are doing numerics, this has problems because you are, uh, you depend, the, you depend in your machine. I mean, you have an L times L system. If L is very big, you lose because your computer is not going to do it. So there are more tricks or more things to compute uh, range entropies or entanglement entropies also that are, uh, what I mentioned was exact diagonalization that has technical complications and there are numerical, other numerical stuff that depends, I am not an expert, at all, I don't know in any case what they do in density matrix normalization group of quantum state tomography, but they play with different bases and they do things. I don't know, but there are uh, more options that, than just the pure exact diagonalization. Okay, we can, you can compute range entropies also using holography that we will, are going to see tomorrow. Or what I'm going to explain now, you can use the replica trick. That is something that you use when you are dealing with quantum field theories or conformal field theories. Uh, or you can use uh, something called resolvent method. Uh, that I'm not an expert on that. But if Nacho Reyes is around and you are interested, you can ask him. He's the resolvent guy. Uh, and now we are going to enter in the replica trick that we are going to, to see tomorrow also in gravity. <clears throat> so the replica trick was uh, like uh, mentioned, let's say, in a primitive form in this, in this paper by Wilczek and friends. And they developed in by Calabrese and Cardi 10 years ago, the first paper. And I will explain, explain it uh, starting from quantum mechanics. So um, here one exercise that you can do, maybe is to, is to start, is to see, is to check that this is the way that the ground state wave function can be written. This, this is something that you can do if you have time. It's very, it's explained in this Nishoka review I, I, I told you. But for now, believe me that the, the ground state wave function can be written in this way. You are doing a, an integration, a path integral. This is the action, the Euclidean action. And these are your boundary conditions these two, the initial and final time. <clears throat> With this density matrix here, this is just by normalization, I put it there by normalization, it's just this. Uh, the reduced density matrix can be written as the trace over a subsystem B of this object. Um, and you can see that this reduced density matrix has a matrix element 
that can be written in this form. In, in this, in this uh, notation, I, I'm thinking that, for example, you have two particles with positions, uh, with coordinates x a and x b, and then you can write a state like this. I'm thinking this uh, particular case. And then you can write matrix elements in this way. Uh, well, you have to integrate over the position of the particle B because you are tracing, doing the partial trace on XB. And you will have this, uh, the important thing is the boundary conditions on this integral. The boundary conditions are written like this. This will be the position of particle A. and the one for particle B. As we are tracing on, on B, you can see that the, the condition is the same, but it's different for the particle A. So if you integrate over XB, what remains you uh, is <clears throat> an integral over the whole YB uh, real plane. And then you can write the integral that remains when you integrate xv, integrate xv. And then you can write the integral in this way where you impose the boundary conditions, these uh, strange boundary conditions, you can impose it using these delta functions. And that's only, this is how it looks, the, uh, matrix elements of the reduced density matrix. Now, you, we can do the same in, uh, in quantum field theory. Now, instead of the, the variable before was x, now will be phi x is the variable. Instead of x, the state now you are going to label the state in this way instead of x. And now the one function will be obviously a function of the field. Um, and here I define phi naught. This is all, this is the, the, again, the wave function for the vacuum. And this is the definition of this state. an eigenvalue of this. And then you can compute, this is the same expression as you obtain in quantum mechanics, but extended to quantum field theory. Uh, and what are you, in pictures, what are you doing here? Or, or even in the previous slide, I'm going to draw the picture here, but in picture, what you are doing is this integration. You are integrating this region. Uh, this is for psi. If you have psi, the conjugate of psi changes the integration limit. If this you were thinking this, you will have this. Ten minutes left, Raúl. Thank you, Martin. So this is the integral you, you are doing if you compute the, the wave function or the complex conjugate of the wave function. Now, in this picture, if you take the partial transposition, the partial trace, the partial transposition is something that you need for entanglement negativity, not, not for this case. You take the partial trace, what you are doing, for example, you have a region, a segment here, What you are doing, this is region A, this is region B, you are tracing out B. And this is a ground. In the ground, ground place.
what you are doing now is to take the partial trace on the region B, essentially. And then when you compute a density matrix elements of this density matrix, as we did before, you see that you have this delta function that uh, tells you about the boundary condition, the straight boundary condition. At the end, what you are going to compute, what you have is this normalization and the picture that you have to have in mind is this uh, square. is the following. Well, you have a, the boundary condition on top, on one side of the of this cut, this segment, and another boundary condition in the another side. And the rest of the, of the plane is, um, glued. you have to, to take the part, uh, the operation of take the partial trace over B is the gluing uh, of these two of these two things on on B, and then you obtain this this uh, naive picture. So here you have the now you have matrix elements of the of the reduced density matrix, then you can compute trace to row to the n. You can do it by just contracting indices and, and the things that you do with a, a, a matrix. And then what you obtain is a space time that is like this one. You are doing any copies, any copies of this system of this uh, region. If I can paste. You have any copies. Mm. Any copies and the boundary conditions on the fields told you that if you have phi one here, and phi two in the another side, you have phi two here and phi three here and so on. And take the trace means that you have to identify the last one with the first one. Take the trace in this integral means that. So um, at the end, what you have to compute what people realize is that the, this trace to the trace of row to the n is a quotient between the partition function in the original space time that you had in the complex plane elevated to the n. And on the numerator, you have the partition function of this n for cover of your original space time. That, in, that is complicated in, in general, this is a complicated partition function, difficult to obtain. Once you have traced the root to trace of rho to the n, uh, well, it's, it's easy. You can compute the entanglement entropy, the range entropy in this way, this expression, or the modified range entropy, the improved range entropy in this way. For three theories, there are something that I don't know in detail, but it's called heat kernel method. You can compute the green functions using the heat kernel method. Uh, and then you can obtain, in some cases, this ZN, I guess. Uh, but I didn't understand too much the argument. It's, it's done in this review of Soroukin. And last slide is, well, it's not the last, but. Uh, we have another, another, this, we have, what I was saying is that you have to compute this partition function. This partition function depends on the Lagrangian that you have. You can have scalar fields, fermions, what you want, is the Lagrangian of your fields, and depends, of course, on this complicated manifold, MN. 
And I'm telling you that you have to do this thing and to, to compute this path integral to obtain the partition function. Well, people realize, as far as I know in this paper, but maybe it was early, in this paper is, uh, it's a good paper to read this. Well, you realize that this is equivalent to do another thing that is consider that you have your original complex plane, but if, instead of, of having one field theory, you have to have n copies of the original field theory that you have. Uh, and then this is the partition function. This ln will be ln will be the sum. P1, now you have L field, N fields. Also the vacuum is different. Now the vacuum that you have is the tensorial, tensorial product of then replicas vacuum. And this you see is the integral over on the complex plane, but of course you have to mimic the fact that you had a complicated manifold and, and the thing that does the show is the boundary conditions on this integral that uh, relates the field on different sheets. I mean, the fact that you, before you have the relation between fields in different sheets, now you have the relation between different kinds of fields also. Uh, this replica trick has a set n, set n symmetry, that is a permutation. So if you permute, if you change this, uh, this, these sheets, you have to obtain the same. And once you have this kind of permutations, you can uh, add to your theory some something called twist fields. that satisfies this, uh, you can define, this is the definition of the expectation value of, of, of operators on, on, the, on the theory. You see that the definition is the same as if you were on the complex plane, but again, you have these funny boundary conditions that tells you that you are computing this expectation value and you have a twist field. Uh, the, well, the thing what this proved there is that the partition function on this complicated space time is the same as the expectation value on the vacuum of these twist fields. So um, this is better and this is not better because the twist fields are complicated objects. So it's not clear that you can uh, compute it or you can find it, uh, at least at, uh, as far I know. But if you're in a CFT, and this is another example that you can work out Raúl, we example. are we are on time. We are just on okay. time. Okay, I say just this, and and I'm done. The last one, we can skip, or you can ask in the in the afternoon. Um, you can see that this, if you are in a CFD, these two fields. Here, the, the the exercise is to take the again one segment, and you want to compute the range entropy. You can read it from here or from here. And there is a new derivation using worship, string, open string worship and closed string worship that appeared last month. Uh, what you can see is that the twist fields are primary operator. So you, you know uh, the expectation value you have just, what you need is just a coordinate transformation that makes the expectation value of this N vacuum to the complex plane. And then these are primary fields with this primary operate, this uh, uh, scaling dimension, these uh, conformal dimensions. And then applying the formula I wrote in the last slide, you can, you can write this. But this is again an exercise that is done and you can ask me if you have problems. Uh, and this just was the last one. Uh, but I can, if someone is interested, I can say this is 
which are the proponents of all this program of replica trick in this, uh, this quantum field theory setup. Uh, okay, but I can, if someone asks, I can tell you afterwards. We, we are on time. Can, can we shift the question for the discussion session? For, for me, yes. I mean, yeah. I know yeah, no problem. Well, for, people, for, for people in general, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, we are on time. So thank you, Raul. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. <laughs>